Well, Isaiah 9, chapter 6 says, Unto us a child is born. And that prophecy from Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus was born, is a way that we celebrate the uniqueness of Jesus' birth. And we celebrate all season long the birth of Jesus. Well, standing before us today are some families who have also received the blessing of uh, celebrating the birth of some children that have been born unto them. Uh, for them, and uh, we are just so excited for those who are standing before you today. This is a significant moment in our church. This is a holy moment. This is a, a sanctified moment where we have families standing before you that are doing three things today. They are, first of all, confirming their love for God. They are clarifying ownership, that these children belong to God, that he's the owner who has given them this gift, and they are the stewards of this gift. And so it is clarifying that ownership. But also there is a commitment that's happening today from these families where they are committing to raise their children in the truth and grace of Jesus, that they will be spiritually engaged in the lives of their children. And today, between our two services, we have uh, 15 families, 17 children that are standing before us today to do that. And I think we should celebrate and applaud what God does through these families right now. Let's praise God for that. Woo! And we are celebrating it. You know, maybe you've seen a child dedication before. We do it twice a year here at Northside, and it never gets old, does it? And when you see families making this kind of a commitment, it's what we celebrate. It's one of the things that we live for as a church that represents a core value and a priority for us. And that's why we're celebrating it, that these families have a window of opportunity. It's going to go by fast, but God has built rhythms into their lives to invest in these children. Chad Harrington, in his book, Dedicated, talks about a painting that used to hang in their house. It was of the prodigal son, Luke 15, and it was a, a young man in, in modern clothes on his knees, his father wrapping his arms around him, holding him. It was a picture of that story Jesus told of a, of a boy who came to age and, and decided to leave his father, go his own way, do his own thing, live his own life who came to his senses and came back home to his father and the father embraced him with open arms. He talked about the day when his dad took that painting off the wall and, and got it down to where his sister and he could see it and touch it. And he told them that he loved them like this father loved that boy, which is the way that God loves them. And he told him that story and it became etched in Chad's mind that his father loved him no matter what and was committed to him and wanted him more than anything to know Jesus. It was a significant moment in his life. And this is a significant moment where these parents are committing to help their children understand that truth, that Jesus wants to take that which is lost and make them found, that which is dead and give life again. And so we're celebrating that with these families. And I, I just right now just want to introduce to you our families. So I'm going to start way down here uh, on this end and tell you who's standing before us today. And so first of all, uh, right here we have, we have uh, let's get in the right service. We have Amaya Angel. Uh, this is the daughter of Theodore Angel. And standing with them is Kate DeMello and Lily here. And then next to them we have Audrey Fern. And this is the daughter of Michael and Kendra Freeman. And then we have Scarlett Ann and Scotland Michelle, the daughters of Matthew and Heather Harris. And then we have Olivia Martin, the daughter of Reuben and Kate Martin, and we have Darcy Alice, the daughter of Ron, and Sarah Neidert, and we have Rosalyn, the daughter of Nikki Petrie. We have Adora Rosalie, the daughter of John and Abby Pinniger, and then we have Luella Carter and Hazley Joanne, the daughters of Lindsay and Joshua Ungarski. And then we have Jackson Oliver, the son of Megan and Philip Strong, and then finally, we have Essence Hosanna, the daughter of Alan and Bree Tiger. So this is our families that are represented today that we're celebrating. I just want to say to, to our parents and, and families today that when Jesus was 40 days old, Mary and Joseph brought him to the temple as the law required to dedicate him to the Lord. 
They were doing what was recorded in Luke 2, 22. In that moment, they're doing what the law commanded, which is a reminder to them that God had freed them from Egypt and that they were to give their first to God, their best to God. You stand here today to give your best to God, to give your first to God. As parents, we entrust to the Lord the very children that God has entrusted to us. Ephesians 6, 4 says that we're to bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord, just like what Timothy's mother and grandmother did for him. Whenever Paul said that from infancy, they taught him the Holy Scriptures to make him wise to salvation. That's a commitment you're making today, that you will teach your children the Scriptures so that they will become wise to salvation. There will come that day when they would know Jesus and believe in him and confess their sins and repent of those sins and be baptized into Christ. And I already have one shaking her head. She's ready to do it. She was, she was excited about that. Almost, not quite. Our challenge is that you pray with your children. Read scripture to your children. Talk about the Lord with your children. Worship consistently with your children. Connect them to the community of faith. Serve alongside your children and commit wholeheartedly to Jesus so you'll become a model for your children like Hannah did with her son Samuel when she dedicated him to the temple to be used for God's service. Long before she dedicated her son, she herself was dedicated to the Lord. And so we want you today to make a commitment that you will dedicate yourselves first and foremost to the Lord so that in doing so, your children will be dedicated to the Lord, that you'll be committed to helping them become disciples and followers of Jesus. So parents, I wanna ask you a series of questions. You can simply respond by saying, we will, and it's a good thing that parents are multitaskers. We've learned to do that with our children. So here we go. Before this family of believers, Will you commit yourselves to bring up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord? Will you? Will you dedicate yourselves to living as a godly example before them? And will you take your responsibilities seriously to pray for your children regularly, bring them to church consistently, teach them God's word accurately, and when appropriate, encourage them to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Will you? Praise God for that. And church, I want to ask you to make a series of commitments as well because as a church we are committed to helping families and children know Jesus, become followers of Jesus through our ministries, our training, our teaching, our equipping, our preaching, even our attitudes. So church, let me ask you this. You can respond by saying we will. Do we as a church commit ourselves to family ministry, encouraging and assisting parents and guardians in the task of teaching and training children in God's word? Will we? And church, will we give up our personal preferences in order to reach this next generation for Christ? Will we? And church, will we create a culture that loves, encourages, accepts, and invests in this next generation, will we? Praise God for that. Let's, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you and pray your blessing on these families represented here today. In fact, as we continue in this blessing, if you're in this room right now and you are family, you're a, you're a, a, ma, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, your family, will you stand right now in this moment if you're in the room and you're family? Because we want this prayer of blessing to be prayed over you because you too have a role in assisting, encouraging, and helping these parents to raise these children in the Lord. And so this prayer is over you as well. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May his name ever be on you. And may the Lord bless you with the knowledge of him, wisdom to apply truth, strength to endure opposition, courage to conquer fears, patience to leave room for God to work, Holy Spirit empowerment to live for Jesus and to overcome the evil one. And so may his favor be on you, on you and your family and your children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you, beside you, all around you, within you, because he is with you. Emmanuel, God with us. 
Jesus, we pray your blessing over these families and over these children. Go before them becoming the rock, their salvation. And we pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people say, amen. Praise God for that.